Hello guys and welcome to my first ever, I think, PvE build video. Now a quick disclaimer here, obviously in terms of PvE compared to PvP there is a definite meta. There is always a setup that is better than other setups. So just keep in mind that this build is almost definitely on YouTube. Everywhere else I have no idea about that. However, what I am going to do that's a little different is because I am not someone who uses add-ons, I'm going to make this a bit more console friendly and a bit more user friendly. And I'm actually going to give you a rotation that I've spent a decent amount of time working out mathematically that is best optimized to keep the rotation simple, but still get you really good and consistent DPS numbers. Obviously, if you are going to approach this sort of play style in terms of running a rotation, you need to have pretty good awareness of when things change. For example, in a rage, you may have certain aspects going and you need to know, for example, if I use a shield, how many steps do I move along? And also in general with the practice, you're just going to need to practice quite literally. It is going to be down to a few hours of grinding out, doing it again and again to get it down. It took me a couple of days to get this perfect, but now I'm pretty consistent. And I would say that the DPS is anywhere between about 43 and 44k consistently and on a high end pushing somewhere around 44. So let's move on to the build itself. Now again, I have to reiterate this as much as I can. Keep in mind that when it comes to PvE, there is always a best. Unlike PvP where there's lots of different varieties of play style, customizations, you need to focus on a wide range of stats. PvE as DPS is all about that. DPS, you need to maximize the damage you're doing each second at all costs. So that is exactly what we do. That is why you may have easily seen this exact setup before. Very possible because it is going to be the best basically and that's how it works. What I'm doing to make this a bit of a different video is I am also going to explain a rotation and I don't think that I've seen anyone do this from Magblade because people generally aren't used to making it. There's quite a lot of complex maths actually in Imaginate Blade rotation to perfect it. And I spent a couple of hours like cracking the numbers basically to get things simpler. So generally when people talk about Imaginate Blade DPS, they just say keep the buffs up as much as possible, preferably 100%, and then you're gonna get great numbers. Nobody really throws out a static rotation. They more do like a rotary rotation as in it changes all the time. By making very, very small sacrifices to uptime on one dot, um, it's about 1.5 seconds total over a period of 45 seconds, we are able to get a static rotation and that is what I've made. So for anyone who wants to have a simpler life, anyone on the console, anyone inexperienced or even anyone experienced who just wants to have a bit of an easier way to approach DPSing, this is your video. This is going to help you, I assure you, because I've spent the time doing this for your sakes. So let's move on to the build itself. Now again, I have to reiterate this as much as I can. Keep in mind that when it comes to PvE, there is always a best. Unlike PvP where there's lots of different varieties of play style, customizations, you need to focus on a wide range of stats. PvE as DPS is all about that. DPS, you need to maximize the damage you're doing each second at all costs. So that is exactly what we do. That is why you may have easily seen this exact setup before. Very possible because it is going to be the best basically and that's how it works. What I'm doing to make this a bit of a different video is I am also going to explain a rotation and I don't think that I've seen anyone do this from Magblade because people generally aren't used to making it. There's quite a lot of complex maths actually in Imaginate Blade rotation to perfect it and I spent a couple of hours like cracking the numbers basically to get things simpler. So generally when people talk about Magic Knight Blade DPS, they just say keep the buffs up as much as possible, preferably 100%, and then you're going to get great numbers. Nobody really throws out a static rotation. They more do like a rotary rotation, as in it changes all the time. By making very, very small sacrifices to uptime on one dot, um, it's about 1.5 seconds total over a period of 45 seconds. We are able to get a static rotation and that is what I've made. So for anyone who wants to have a simpler life, anyone on the console, anyone inexperienced or even anyone experienced who just wants to have a bit of an easier way to approach DPSing, this is your video. This is going to help you, I assure you, because I've spent the time doing this for your so let's move on. So let's move on to our setup. We are going to be using, first of all, five pieces of mechanical acuity. This is really nice right now. Guarantees crits for five seconds, as well as having some nice stats previous. 
It does have a long cooldown, but even that's cooldown, the duration is worth it. Now, what's important about this is you want to run on your front bar only. So a fire staff on the front bar, and then we're going to run for four pieces of armor. One heavy, one medium, preferably heavy chest, and medium body or legs. In my case, I've got for the helmet, sorry. So heavy body, medium helmet or legs, and then the rest in light on the armor. Now note, our next piece is going to be one Kenna, which gives us spell damage. If you do not have this in light, you could run this in medium or heavy and just adjust the crafted set of acuity as needs be. It won't be quite as tanky in the long run, but I mean, it's not the end of the world. It really won't make a massive difference and it's going to help your survive. Uh, it's going to help your DPS significantly to get it as 511. Our next five piece then is going to be Master Architect. So what this does is it gives us minus Slayer on the three piece and then Major Slayer on the five piece when we use an ultimate ability and that also buffs two friends. So not only are we going to help our group's DPS, but it also does a great job for your own DPS. There are very few fights where this set will be slightly outweighed by Burning Spellweave, but for the most part, I would suggest going Master Architect. It's generally pretty good. Almost all trials, this will be your best. Almost all dungeons, it'll be a best. And in the scenarios where it's not, it's not an enormous difference. It'll be 1 or 2k fully buffed. So we're talking raid buffs and all, which in the end of it is not the end of the world. Unless you're going for a top score, in which case, frankly, you're probably not watching this video. Because this video is designed for the wide pool. And if you're getting those numbers, you're probably already pulling the numbers. So, yeah. All of our pieces are going to be divines or magicka enchanted. Our architect is going to be two armor and three jewelry. No, one of my jewelry is blue because my RNG sucks. I can't drop a necklace for the life of me. Um, all of those are going to be spell damage, enchanted, all armor, magic, enchanted, and divines. Our staff of mechanical acuity is going to be a flame glyph and infused. Our back bar then is a Maelstrom fire staff. This is just too good to miss. Maelstrom is very, very strong. Very good buff. A lot of damage coming from this. This is infused with the berserker glyph, which is ochre. Kuta and Rapora. That's giving us spell damage and weapon damage. Now, if you don't have Maelstrom and you can't really get through it for whatever reason, maybe you're a new player, the other set you could go for is putting your Architect back bar only and running a Fire Staff, free armor, and taking off your one piece of Acuity, putting that on the Crafted to open up a monster set. And you'd be going for something like Zahn, Grofdar, Double Kennet if you're very confident, those sort of options. I would suggest against that, it is going to be less DPS, but if you truly can't get hold of the Fire Staff, that's your other option, since that's very farmable, because you can get Architect in normal version. It won't be gold, but who cares? It's not a massive difference. It will add up, actually, by a surprising amount, but it's still playable. So let's move on to our skills. Actually, let's not. Let's explain some other stuff first. Firstly, our food is going to be Clockwork Citrus Fillet. This is going to give you health, magicka, and magicka recovery. Bread and butter, really great stats. It's giving us exactly what we need. Now note, you could also run with blue food for magic and health only, a bit more damage and a bit more health. You could also run with tri food, which still give a bit more magic, a bit more health, but it will also give stamina if you're struggling to sustain one of our skills, which is stamina based. I would suggest going for this in the long run. This is obviously a bit expensive for some people, so which mother is going to be the alternative with sustain? That might make your health pool a bit low. So just adjust those foods as is comfortable for you and your group. Our pot then is going to be spell power pots. This is going to give us major sorcery. Obviously, we need that. 20% more damage is huge. And then magicka. The crit matters a bit, uh, but not the end of the world because generally one of our skills will carry that. Um, it can depend because that skill may not always be on our bar. Our race then, you're going to want to go Dark Elf if possible. It's more damage than High Elf, but High Elf, if you are a PvPer, finds the balance of both worlds. So I do both PvP and PvE, as demonstrated by my totally sad amount of achievement points. In the end, it comes down to your preference. I would suggest if you're going to do PvP and PvE, that you go with uh, the Dark Elf, but... Sorry, High Elf, but if you're only going to PvE, Dark Elf is better damage per second, and it is noticeable. Mundus then is the Apprentice. On a target dummy, Lover would actually be more, but in a real try, you're going to over-penetrate the boss if you take that. Apprentice is going to be your best Mundus choice here. The crit ones are simply not worth it these days. I am a vamp. It's up to you whether you take this. It will depend largely on the trial. I'm actually a vamp for a PvP perspective, 
some trials it's nice for sustain. If there's any fire damage, you're gonna to want to feed this down to at least stage two, maybe stage one, or even just cure it. Because in the end, obviously if you've got a big trial boss, let's take Vhoff, something like that, it is gonna hit very hard with that fire damage. I would generally survive, suggest not getting hit by that fire damage. And so drop the vamp for that. But if you can get away with it, it is nice for the extra sustain. It does make a bit of a difference in your long fights. Our skills then. So again, this will be fairly generic. I will try and explain some passives for newer players. Um, I'll also explain how you can piece things together, how you can mix it up based on comfort. So our first skill is gonna be Crippling Grasp. This is your smaller dot on the Nightblade, but this is PVE. It's all about dots because dots have an overall higher damage generally, not every time, but mostly. And so whenever possible, we're taking the highest damaging skill. We're aiming to keep the uptime on these as high as possible. We also need a siphoning skill from Bart because that's gonna give us 8% extra magicka from our siphoning passives just by here. Um, so that's gonna be important as well. But we would actually have funnel health here as well, which is gonna be our spammable DPS. Now what I mean by spammable, this is PVE. You're not actually gonna spam it, but it's a DPS where all your dots are down. They're already got some duration left. You need a DPS to fill the gap. Bam, spammable DPS, funnel health is your friend. It's gonna heal your group. It's gonna be a really nice DPS and it's quite sustainable as well, which is great. Impale is gonna be bread and butter for execute. It hits really, really hard. Um, you're not just gonna do it and execute, you are gonna still put some dots up, but it can make a difference in execute. It's a lot of damage to keep, definitely bang that on. Merciless then is going to be our big boy deeps. This is the tough one though. This is where Nightblade is harder to play. So. When you get better at this, and if you do follow my rotation, you'll be able to do this without thinking, you're going to be able to hit three bows per cast. So when you first cast it, you don't obviously have anything. After five light attacks, you have a proc, then you can cast the bow. You could do that three times if you get the rotation perfect. Pay attention to the rotation section if you can. I will link all the sections down below in the description. Next go in Mage Light, more Magicka, more damage. It's really that simple. The crit is great, but we get that buff from the pot anyway. In the end, it's there for the Magicka. It gives us a lot of extra Magicka, 5% and 2% from the Mage Kill passives. Gotta have it. Our ulti then is Elemental Rage. This is the Destruction Staff static morph of it. So if you're a PvPer, you may have the other. You do want to remorph this. It's a big difference. This is fantastic for an early ultimate in a fight. It's also going to be really good for AoE fights. However, there are some times where we're also going to use our back bar ulti. It will depend a bit. Um, so generally what you're going to do is in the initial ult, you're going to use this. It's going to be already up. In an AoE fight, you're only going to use this. And if it's a boss that's only single target, you'll use this at the start. And then you'll use your back bar ulti consistently. It's also going to give us the destruction staff passives on our front bar. This is going to increase your damage. Flame staff by 8% for single target abilities. Some people would run one of the other skills here, which I'll explain in a sec. I like having Cripple on the front bar because it does, in the end, have a single target section, and I like to buff the extra damage. But in the end, it's more about comfort on positioning of the skill. You could put that on the back bar. I just am more used to running it this way, so it does make life easier. On your back bar then, Siphoning Attacks is your first. This is going to give us the Siphoning Passive that I explained before on your back bar. Great, good news, Blobs. But it's also going to give us a lot of sustain. If you're going to cast this, you want to replace a funnel health with this, not a dot when I explain the rotation to make things easier for you. Harness, really important in most trials. If you're running with a really good group in a basic dungeon, you could potentially drop this for mage like just to speed things up a bit. But I'll be realistic with you. I would always suggest keeping it myself because in the end, you never know if someone's gonna make a mistake, crash, whatever it may be. And it's good to have that survivability. In late end trials, you have to have this. There's too many phases where you need it to survive. So bang that on, big difference made. You do want this morph not dampen because you want the sustain that it gives. Blockade of Fire, this is your big dot, the big boy dot itself, because it's gonna give you Maelstrom buff and it hits really hard. It's a ground-based AoE, doesn't last that long, so we're casting it fairly often, but it hits very, very hard. This is your first priority dot in my opinion. Twisting Path, also a really nice dot these days. This is going to give a similar buff to Blockade in terms of a ground AoE. It just lasts a lot longer for a bit less damage at the time. It is going to be another really important dot. Rearming Trap then. This is so essential with Acuity because Acuity guarantees crits, as I explained before. This gives you Minor Force, which increases your crit damage. Done. Why not increase your crit damage if you know you're going to crit? Obviously, it makes sense. And it's actually, even though being physical damage, not a bad dot. So 
I know it's not perfect as a dot, but for that buff on the crit damage, it is well worth the slot, especially in a build that hits so hard on a crit. You do want to try bang this on. Yeah, I mean, if you can't sustain stamina, your best alternative would be to drop one Kenner and run a Dormer House there, which would give you magic and stamina. That would help your stamina sustain a bit and still give you magic for damage. Just note that spell damage affects light attacks. Made Magicka does not. So in the end, you are going to be better off running the spell damage for damage perspective wherever possible. Our last skill then is Soul Harvest. This is going to be our damage after our flame ult in single target fights. And it's how we're going to proc our Master Architect for that Major Slayer very, very reliably. It also hits really high as magic damage. It's also going to give you ulti when killing on the back bar, which is quite handy in some fights for speeding your ult return up. But in the end, it's a very good ulti for Architect, and that's the reason it's there. It's also there to proc your hemorrhage passives from the assassination, which is going to give you crit damage on your back bar. So next, I'm going to explain your CP. Now, note that the red tree will vary heavily depending on the trial. So don't be too fussed about perfecting the red tree. Generally, I would suggest talking to your raid leader in trials and optimizing it for that trial. If you're doing something that you really aren't sure about, I would just suggest getting a spread in direct damage, spell shield, dots, uh, physical damage, magic damage, and shield. In the end, that's going to be important. But again, depending on the raid, this will actually vary a fair bit. The green tree then, I've adjusted as follows. Again, you can customize this based on bits that you lack or benefit from. There's just one bit that I would suggest sticking to. I have 40 in the Warlord to help break free. There's a lot of trials where there's sort of CCs come in, especially Vihoff, which I'm focusing on at the moment for some achievements. Um, it's quite handy for that. It does save a lot of stamina and scales really well. Six in bashing for any interrupts. The large amount are going to be pumped into Tenacity and Arcanist for Magicka Sustain from heavy attacks if we have to, and recovery where possible. And then I have a few points in Tumbling for Roll Dodge 40 there, and the last two in our blocking. They have fixed it now so that exact scaling will work if you have, for example, 1%. It used to be that didn't work, but I've heard from reliable people that that is now fixed. Our blue tree, this will be a bit different to other people you've seen. I do see some variation between different people in terms of this. I really have done a fair bit of testing and I am going to be the one to disagree with some other people. I think the points in Star Effects but are worth it to a small extent. But hey, each to their own. In the end, if you're not happy with the CP, adjust it as you like. This is just what I run. So I am running 56 in Elfborn, 49 in Elemental Expert. This is your crits and base damage. 31 into Penetration. Now note again, for experienced players, you just want to make sure that you're not over-penetrating with group buffs such as Alkosh, Crusher Enchant, etc. But generally speaking, that should be fine. Your raid leader will almost definitely know. I'm then running 61 in Master Architect for, sorry, Master Architect, Master Arms, I mean, for direct damage, and then free in Staff Expert. It does scale really well. Now, if you are over-penetrating, I would actually even suggest taking six more points out of Spell Erosion and putting this up to nine, which also scales well. But like I said, people run a lot of variations there. 40 in Farmer Touch, finally, for the dot base. Obviously, running a lot of dots, much more starts to scale a bit less generously, so 40 is perfect. All right, so here's the big bit. That bit you might have seen before. I am going to try and explain in the quickest possible way the rotation, a static rotation for Magic Blade to keep things simple. Now, this rotation consistently gets me somewhere between 42 and a half and 44 and a half K DPS as a high elf. So a dark elf, you're probably going to add about 1K, 1.5K extra on top of that. Don't quote me on that number. It's just what I've been told. Again, Keep in mind that this is only going to happen with practice. If you don't practice this rotation, it's going to feel horrible because Nightblade is complicated. I have spent a lot of time trying to make this as simple as possible for people to make the class more accessible and user-friendly. So, the first thing we're going to do, and I'm going to do this in a few phases before we do it once smoothly, sorry if you hear my keyboard, is precast our siphoning attacks and our merciless. So, the siphoning attacks for our sustain, the merciless is to prepare our bow. That's obviously going to go down in a sec, but I'm going to show you the rest of it afterwards. So after we've done our Merciless, we're then going to ult at the start of the fight. We're going to cast Blockade, Twisting Path, Trap and Weapon Swap. So if I show that quick, we're going to go for Siphoning Attacks. I shouldn't have Light Attack, we're not Light Attacking yet. Go for Siphoning Attacks, Merciless and Swap, Ult, Blockade, 
Twisting Path, Rearming Trap, and Swap. When you swap, you then want to go to Cripple, and then to your Merciless. Do not recast Merciless at that point. So that's got all of our dots up at this point. And then we've procced our first bow. Now, one thing to note is obviously between every attack, you're going to want to use a light attack because light attack is going to add into your DPS tremendously. That should be a no-brainer. So if you are losing DPS, consider yourself, am I lacking connecting the light attacks? You'll actually know that very quickly as a match blade, which is a nice benefit because if you don't have a spectral bow ready, you've missed the light attack and you're probably screwed. Don't miss your light attacks. It's easy to do with practice. Check out my animation guide, Gantling guide, if you do need that. It's on my channel. So once we've done that section, we're going to do our second stage rotation. So that's the first phase. It's Alt, Blockade, Twisting Path, Trap, and Swap, Cripple, Merciless. We've cast our bow. We do not recast it. And at that point, I'm going to cast it just ahead of time, just to pretend it was up. We are going to do as follows. Two Funnels, Weapon Swap. Blockade, weapon swap, cripple, and then after that, you're going to be connecting a light attack that's going to give you that bow, and then the merciless. So that bow is procking just as we hit the light attack before the merciless. So let's do those as a double phase, starting at the start. So we're going to go siphoning, merciless. There is something else I forgot to mention, actually. It's quite important. So after you've used your first ult, that is when you want to use your pot. Nightblade has a passive when you use a pot that you get ultimate back that's going to be your first siphoning passive it's very important you do that because that ulti will add up in a fight very quickly so make sure you are potting after your ultimate in this first ult so i'm going to do it smoothly for those first two phases and then we'll do the final phase before we show the repeat so we go siphoning attacks merciless and our rotation so let's do that quickly siphoning attack merciless ult and pot blockade twisting rearming and swap cripple first bow two funnels and swap blockade and swap cripple and then our bow is going to come on that next light attack that's your two stages one more stage to go until you have a full rotation and then we go into the repeat so our third and final stage is going to be after that bow in the funnel section section two so there's three sections to this the first initial dot phase the second with the double funnel and the third with your final weave so we're going to imagine at this point that our Merciless is still ready because obviously explaining this, it's gone down. And then after we've cast that bow, we've still got it up. So we've just cast our bow and as you cast that bow, as you see it release, you're going to weapon swap. You're then going to cast Twisting Path, Trap, Blockade. If you have it, you're going to cast your ultimate. Then you're going to cast Cripple and then you're going to cast Merciless. If you don't have that in cap ready, the soul harvest ready, you want to do one funnel health and then the cripple and that's going to give you the best spacing on that rotation. You are always going to have that in cap ready. Now if it's not ready, you've generally missed a light attack, um, it can make a difference somehow. You don't have to necessarily put that funnel in, so if you decide not to put that funnel in, you'll start your rotation slightly differently to what we would do normally and you're actually going to start with an ultimate again. Um, but that will sort of depend. Again, I'll explain that after we do it properly. So that is our full set of rotations. So I'm going to go over this once in a nice steady thing so you understand the full rotation. Um, I do have to get an ultimate first so I can show that properly. In the end, it's only three sections. I will write it down as well. This is just to try and make it as simple as possible. I know it sounds a lot at the moment, but once you actually understand a mem muscle memory this, it just takes a couple of hours. You will never have to think about it again. I could do this with my eyes blinded. And it really is an easy way to go. So, fully buffed, we're going to go with Siphoning, Merciless. We're going to ult and pop. Light Attack Blockade, Light Attack Twisting, Light Attack Trap Swap, Light Attack Cripple Swap, Light Attack Merciless, Light Attack Funnel, Light Attack Funnel Swap, Light Attack Blockade Swap, Light Attack Cripple Swap, and Merciless and Swap. Light Attack Twisting Path, Light Attack Trap, Light Attack This, Light Attack This, Light Attack Ulti, and then your final bow. Three bows, one full rotation. And then we recast our bow and we go from scratch. It's that simple. So I'll go over that one more time slowly just by talking. I'm not going to cast the skills. I'm just going to explain them. Firstly, ulti. Then you're going to pop straight as you ulti. So just to get that ultimate back. You're going to place your dots in the following order. Blockade, twisting path, rearming trap with a swap cancel. What I mean by a swap cancel is cast and swap in the same tick. Saves a game tick. You're then going to cripple 
and then you're going to Merciless. After that Merciless, you're going to do two Funnel Healths and swap. Blockade and swap. Cripple and Merciless. As that bow is released, you're going to swap. Twisting Path, Trap, Blockade, Swap, Cripple, and then a Funnel or the Ulti, depending what fits. Obviously, if you have the Ulti ready, you can move that into that slot at any point. It's that simple. I know it's a lot to take in, but that is going to get us to 25% health. Now, 25% health, depending on the fight, you are generally going to run a different set of dots. So if you want a free mill dummy or something really low health, you're actually going to kill the boss so fast that it's not worth replacing many dots. You're only really going to keep up your blockade and maybe twisting um, and impale between that. If you are running a high health boss, I actually personally like keeping all dots up. I can't promise that's the most efficient, but all you're going to do is you're going to replace impale instead of your funnel healths. A lot of fights, Cripple might be droppable at that point because Cripple is going to be your smaller dot here. Um, so if you do want to make life simpler in the execute phase, just go Blockade and Twisting Path here. It really will depend on the fight. I hope you were able to take that in. I know that was a lot of information pummeled quite quickly. But fingers crossed you actually heard that and it's going to help you guys. I wish you all the best with it. Best of luck making this rotation work. Any help, ask me in the description and I'll see you in the next video.